Worried about gout? Check out Ural, the effective urinary alkalinizer. Ural, neutralize your uric acid problem now. Welcome to Kitty News, I'm your host Prasad. The government and EPF who were reluctant to allow more special withdrawals previously, today announced that people will be allowed to take at least 10,000 ringgit out of their retirement savings. EPF contributors will be allowed to withdraw up to 10,000 ringgit. The announcement of another round of withdrawals was made by Prime Minister Isma Sabri Yaakob this afternoon. Namun, saya merayu kepada para pencarum supaya mengekalkan simpanan mereka kecuali keadaan benar-benar mendesak. Saya berharap para pencarum membuat pertimbangan yang sewajarnya sebelum melakukan pengeluaran demi masa depan. Isma Sabri said Putrajaya decided to conduct the withdrawal scheme based on research and observation. Ada dalam kalangan keluarga Malaysia yang masih terkesan dari segi ekonomi, hilang pendapatan dan sedang membina semula kehidupan. Kerajaan mendengar, mengkaji dan meneliti permintaan daripada semua pihak untuk pengeluaran caruman KWSP. This is the fourth special withdrawal scheme since 2020. A whopping 101 billion ringgit was withdrawn from the previous three schemes. In a statement this evening, EPF said further details on the application for withdrawal and payment mechanisms will be announced imminently. EPF added that it believes that this should be the last facility allowed under the Special Withdrawal Initiative. On Monday, Finance Minister Tanku Zafrul Abdul Aziz warned that if the government allowed another one-off scheme, 6.3 million people would qualify. This would mean a maximum of 63 billion ringgit can be redrawn, and this will force EPF to sell some of its assets. Rafizi Ramli said Harapan's presidential council was considering a pact with Perikatan National and he called the move madness. However, a DAP leader has called such a pact impossible. Pakatan Harapan will not cooperate with Perikatan National for the forthcoming general election, according to a DAP leader. DAP Chairperson Tan Kok Wai was responding to a claim made by former Pandan MP Rafizi Ramli yesterday. Than told Malaysia that it is impossible for Harapan to cooperate with PN. Than further explained that PN member Bersatu betrayed the coalition and this led to the Harapan government's collapse. After Harapan's defeat in Johor, calls for a Big Ten approach to unite the opposition parties resurfaced. Bangi MP Ong Kian Meng proposed to have flexibility in negotiations with other opposition parties, including PN. Ong suggested that Harapan and PN have informal discussions to avoid multi coded fights in seats with opposition incumbents. DAP Secretary General Lim Guaneng echoed the Big Ten approach but disagreed on including PN in the discussion. In a related matter, Amana Deputy President Salahuddin Ayub stressed that the priority is the opposition and PN is not part of it. Rafizi claimed yesterday that Harapan's presidential council agreed to discuss possibilities to work with PN in the forthcoming general election. Things aren't looking good for Najib's SRC corruption appeal. The federal court delivered its first blow today. The federal court has denied Najib Abdul Razak's bid to introduce additional evidence in his 42 million ringgit SRC International Corruption Appeal. This afternoon, the five-person federal court bench chaired by Chief Justice Thanku Maimon Thuan Mat unanimously dismissed Najib's appeal to adduce alleged fresh evidence. This includes evidence such as the banking information of former Bank Negara Governor Zati Akhtar Aziz's family. Najib is appealing against the Court of Appeals decision on December 7th last year, which dismisses appeal to adduce additional evidence. The next day, on December 8th, the Court of Appeal dismissed his main appeal to squash his conviction as well as a 12-year jail term and 210 million ringgit fine over the SRC graft case. The federal court has yet to fix a date to hear Najib's main appeal to overturn his guilty verdict and sentencing in the SRC case. Past has splintered in the past. Last time it happened, Amana was born. Now we have those who still feel the party should have stuck with Amno instead of Bursatu. Past President Abdul Hadi Awang bulldozed the party's entry into Perikatan National, according to Kuala Nurus MP Khairuddin Aman Razali. Khairuddin recently rebelled against Hadi for steering past closer to Bursatu under PN over Amno under Muafakat National. 
He also said the agreement to form PN was made without going through a central working committee, nor was there a paper sent to the past central committee or the Shura Council to be debated. In contrast, Karudin said the party's electoral pact with AMNO under Muafakat underwent a rigorous process. PN first started an informal coalition between Bersatu and opposition parties in February 2020 when Bersatu President Muhyiddin Yassin pulled his party out of Pakatan Harapan to form a new ruling coalition. Muhyiddin later sought to formalize the coalition by registering PN, but BN parties refused to join. Kairuddin yesterday revealed he quit pass after he was sidelined for being critical of Hadi's direction. The Johor Menteri Besar crisis even has opposition lawmakers feeling bad for BN's Hasni Muhammad. PKR lawmaker Hassan Karim sees the Johor Menteri Besar crisis as a violation of the country's democratic principles. The Pasir Gudang MP said it was evident that the people had voted for Johor Amno chief Hasni Muhammad to lead the state government. However, he said despite Hasni leading BN to a whopping victory, the palace went with a Menteri Besar who was not the choice of the majority of voters. Hasni said this clearly shows that the people's choice for Menteri Besar was rejected by the palace. He added that the incident was very tragic as it was clear there was a violation of parliamentary democracy and constitutional monarchy which formed the basis of the federal constitution and Rukun Negara of the country. BN had campaigned with the assurance that Hasni would return for a second term in office if the coalition won the Johor polls. However, despite combining the support of 38 out of 40 BN lawmakers, Hasni's reappointment as Menteri Bursa met with an unexpected obstacle from what sources said was a higher power. The higher power reportedly preferred Machap assembly person on Afis Ghazi, who was sworn in as Menteri Bursa yesterday. Meanwhile, Shari Samad is standing his ground, saying he's a Democrat above anything else. Amno veteran Shari Samad has denied being disloyal towards the Johor Palace following his comments on the state Menteri Basar crisis. In a statement, he said he was a man of his own principles. Shari said this means he may or may not disagree with the decisions made by his party as well as the monarchy. Sharir had previously said he was ashamed to attend the AMNO General Assembly after former Johor Menteri Besar Hasni Mohammad was not reappointed to serve a second term. This prompted critics to ask whether he was questioning Sultan Ibrahim Sultan Iskandar's decree to appoint a Menteri Besar. He explained that he was not royalist or hardcore AMNO as he has his own principles as a Democrat. Hasni was touted by BN as their poster boy during the Johor election campaign. However, he was not reappointed Menteri Basar. Instead, On Hafiz Ghazi was quietly appointed as Hasni's successor. Rafizi Ramli has caused a bit of a stir this week with his return to politics and his report card on Harapan Apikar doesn't look good. Former Pandan MP Rafizi Ramli believes Pakatan Harapan and PKR have become the least preferred choice for Malay voters. And our finding was that Malay voters generally um, prefer to vote for BN in absence of everything else. And when given a chance, even if um, they were undecided or they were fancy does, you know, mm. they, they prefer BN on the basis that uh, or the second to BN is actually PN, no longer Pakatan, on the basis that, you know, political parties are basically more or less the same. So, you know, if we were to choose, we'd rather choose um, someone we can trust, someone we can <clears throat> get. Rafizi added that voters have found that the opposition could no longer bring them value. In an interview with BFM 89.9, he said his team has done a lot of data work and surveys, which found the alarming trend. In the same interview, Rafizi Ramli said he has no intention of running for PKR's top spot in order not to cause havoc and divert attention from public issues raised by the party. So if you go and create and rock the boat so much, you know, whatever positive message and positive contribution that you can bring to the general support out there will be um, um, basically um, diluted. Um, yeah, diluted. 
um, by the fact that so much focus will be about the contest and personality clash, so to speak. That's number one. You know. He said his priority is not the position, but to ensure the party to be better prepared for the next general election. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kidneytv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Prasad. Thank you for watching.